Greetings. God of Gold is here again. Um, I know I've been making some sparse videos, but then again, I'm a pretty busy person. So luckily, I have decided to find time today and try to squeeze a video in. Now, this tutorial is going to be a little more basic when it comes to Hoi 4 modding. Now, say for example, if you're uh, working with a country or if you're trying to create a new country, the thing that you should always consider, and this is within the mod file too. Now, you can um, just make like a new mod in here, which is always good to start off so that this way you don't overlap other mods. Because, you know, if you overlap them and if you don't have spares or, you know, backups lying around, you're screwed. Because it's not like the game has insurance for it. <laughs> Anyways, so when I launch this, now it might take a little longer because, well, my PC isn't exactly the youngest PC in the world, but it still holds its own for a bit. Um, so the idea is once you create your mod, which I will show you very briefly, if you already know how to do this, then um, you can have, you can skip this uh, section. But basically how it works is each time that you set up your mod, you need to make sure that you know there's the descriptor. You also need to make sure that the dot mod is outside the folder. Also, um, yeah, this tends to happen sometimes. So what I usually do is just retry it until it you know gets it right. Um, as for the file itself, now I was going to use this as an example because this country file isn't technically that complex. This 1939 stuff, that's just a time cap of, you know, certain things. You don't need to worry about that right now, but basically, uh, how, how I briefly, briefly explain it is, you know, what focuses you completed and what technology you have during that year. So... That's usually how that works. But since I'm trying to simplify it um, for those who are either starting out or just simply don't know, that's what I'm trying to do. Now, uh, there is a custom ideology in here because this was from my anarchism mod. But if you're going to add a new ideology in the game, which I might actually make a separate tutorial on, so please do not worry about the ideology IDs the second, although they do play a role. So I would say, for example, in base game, you have, you know, these ideologies. There's only four. Now, you can't set them all to zero. I mean, you could, but even if you don't, like, set a ruling party, your country is going to get a lot of problems. And unless if you have, like, a base name and localization, which is another thing in its own, uh, this could lead to errors. So what you should always do is do it out of 100. Now, you could use decimals, but those are extremely complex and tedious, especially if you're doing many countries like that. I would say if you are to do decimals and, if like, if you really want to do them, I would highly recommend so that they're easier to manage, stick to major countries when it comes to doing that. Do not do it for everything else. Of course, not every country has that, but, you know, stuff like that happens. Now, obviously, Sultan uh, Muhammad guy, uh, Asa, Asa, I don't know. But basically, it's a um, country, I think, somewhere near Ethiopia, at least according to the new DLC. But, um... But basically, how this works is um, you. this is your country history file. And you have OOB, which loads the units to start with. But keep in mind, uh, the country, I would say, should exist. Even if, like, let's say you don't have a capital set. Or, like, the country has to exist. And depending on the OOB, because the OOB is like placement of units, I, I'll explain that the best way I can some other time but basically you the oob can be important for starting units because if i was to delete this right now 
it would have nothing. Or if I was to just do this, like uh, any country tag or maybe example tag, EXA, uh, 1936. And it should always be underscored, by the way, when you're using OOP. <laughs> Remember, these are units, okay? So um, there are different categories um, that probably will be going over in the next tutorials. I'll have to find um, time to um, properly execute them. But basically, this is just on the fly to help people set up a basic country file. So um, you have country ideas. Now, what I would usually do is, uh, yes, you could put at the beginning generic, like if you're making a generic idea, um, or minister, depending on how you go. But remember that it's the ID that you're using, uh, not the localized name. Because, you know, localized name is the text itself that appears when you hover over it. Or whether if you just see it in the game menu or in the political stuff, doesn't matter. If it's there and it's localized, you should be fine. Because if it's not localized, you'll get this in your game. It all underscores and it looks ugly as all hell. Uh, convoys. Those are good for transportation, like say if you want to do like a land invasion on another coast. However, typically this is mainly reserved for majors because of their uh, productivity. Like a nation like um, AFA, for example, for the tag, isn't really like, it's not like uh, Russia, China, uh, UK, France, Germany, US, you know, stuff like that. But if a country is powerful enough, or if you want a country to be powerful enough, you need the productivity. And without the productivity, it's going to be very hard for, you know, stuff like that to work. Now, convoys also could work for trade too, because, you know, if you don't have enough of them, or if you're using up too much, it can be complicated. I mean, that's, I'm not 100% it uses for trade, but I definitely know for sure that it uses for military. Now, if you want like a basic set like that, that's fine. But keep in mind, that is not enough to do a land invasion. So, hope that clears out. Now, back to the character situation. You have the country uh, tag, and you have the character ID after it. So, I could type anything I want here. Since... EXA is country example. You could do something like this. EXA. And you can also do my character. I would always leave after the country tag and after this uh, underscore. Like, you still underscore everything. But the next words that follow the country tag, I always do lowercase. Because I can see the tag much easier. It's way more organized. Because... If you do something like this, say if I was to capitalize all that, you can't see that. That's very annoying. I mean, granted, you could do it like that, but that means you have to put it in the common file, which common file, that's where also the characters are at. So characters, I might go in depth either. You know what? I'll go in depth with them in the next video. But for now, for now, it's just basic country setup. Now... The default ideology I've noticed when it comes to this game, especially in a vanilla game, purely vanilla, um, unless if you have something modded, if you don't have like a politics set up or something, or if it causes a bug, it usually resorts to fascism. Now, I'm not sure what kind of programming that would involve in, because the game itself uses its own... Uh, scripting I, I don't know but basically that's what the country starts with however if you rearrange the ideologies like say you have communism as the first one because you're going from left to right on the political spectrum and well communism would come first basically it's it usually goes by uh either the first ideology or something that is just scripted. I don't know. It's, it's a weird phenomenon. I can't explain, but basically that's what happens. Um, every country of course is different. Every leader is different. You get different traits, which I would also explain in the next video because traits tie into characters. 
Um, so here, let's talk about the politics. Now, um, the politics, pretty straightforward. I mean, if it's confusing, here's the rundown. So this is if you want elections to be allowed. This is how many elections, I guess. This one doesn't really matter as much. Uh, the elections allowed does more. Uh, last election, I would say, is important if you want to do bookmarks because think of it this way. If it's not 1936 and it's 1937, you're going to get, get a completely different thing for that time period. Say, for example, say if I set that to 1939, the game starts in 1936. What's going to happen? I'm three years uh, behind that date. It's ahead of me. So that means that leader will not come up, or at least the political stuff won't come up appropriately. Now, if you do the 1939 or, no, pretty much a later tag, yeah, it might have a chance of working, but you also need to watch the dates. You can't just, you know, throw it around there. But if you're really, really unsure, and this is for vanilla, uh, this does not work for every other mod because every other mod has a different time period. Like, for example, Great War, Great War Redux start in 1910. So I would say if you are going to start a leader, um, I would say go to the very earliest date in that mod, in that scenario. Like, for example, 1910. Simple. You just put 1910. If it's 1920, you put 1920. Or if you want to do a modern day since it starts in 2000, same thing, 2000, or you could do 1990 and prior, but you cannot, it also should be realistic because you don't want to have a leader that's, let's say, over 100 years old. Now, as interesting as that would be, that's not common among leaders. So I would say uh, make it realistic, but if you really are concerned about this, I mean... You don't necessarily need the frequency in the last election. Although I would say keep the last election. You don't need the frequency. I mean, I would just hold on to all of them just to be on the safe side. Like, for example, if you are an authoritarian um, leader here, like if you have one, it would be either you could do neutrality or if he's a fascist, you can do fascism. Like, for example. Also, I forgot to mention... When you set ruling parties, even if you have the party popularities, and by the way, it's out of 100. So let's say you have 100% popularity in fascism. Now, like I said earlier, you can do decimals, but complicates things. Even if you have this party popularity for that ideology, that is not your ruling party. That's not how this works. You have to put it also up here. And you have to check off certain things. Now, if let's say it's going to be some random leader, you could start in 1936 or prior. But if you really are not sure of, you know, like if you're confused or if you don't know when this leader is going to come up, like I said, always stick to the starting date or a little before it. Don't go like, let's say 1900, because that's, that's 36 years. That's a while. And keep in mind, characters are at different ages. So, um, yeah, stuff like that. Now, fascism would be the main ideology. Now, unfortunately, I didn't set up the mod to test it. But basically, how that would work is, um, aside from setting up the basic stuff, you also have the ideas, which I forgot to mention, which these could actually be national spirits. Uh, you can also recruit characters, but the characters are only used through the uh, smaller icons. They act as your ministers. But if you have large portraits, like there's only small and large. If you have the small portraits, they are ministers. If they are large portraits, they're country leaders or party leaders, depending on where it stands. Now you could have one of both, but you need the graphics for it. What I mean by that is the sprites, um, which you can use an interface to put the pathing in, but I know that's a little complex, so 
I'll try to avoid that, but basically that's how it works. Once you have a character, you localize it, you put its stats down, its traits, its ideology, of course, sub ideology, I forgot to mention. Um, so I think what I'm, all that's left now is um, in case if you don't know, this is how this works. So um, when you have your mods set up, you should always do, you're not uploading mod, keep that in mind. You're just creating a mod. So you can do my mod, or you can call it whatever you want. Depends on you. So then same thing here, my mod. I would always do underscore. Now you can put capitals like this, for example. Like you can do my mod like that. But um, just remember that is the idea of the mod itself. Um, you can put anything you want up here. You can put test. You could put zero. You could put 0 0.1. It's up to you. That one is pretty free. Now, what is required is a tag. Without a tag, this won't work. So let's say this fixes certain things, like, um, well, you could do historical. It also depends on your focus, too. Like, are you focusing on units? If so, like, units uh, would probably be, yeah, military. Technology, obviously. Now, sometimes, well, usually technology and military can tie in. So depending on where you stand, you might as well check both of them just so that you can keep track better. Um, you can only have up to 10 tags, by the way. So keep that in mind. You can always add them in in post-production. Um, so yeah, that's how to set up a mod. Um, you... By the way, I forgot to mention, you just click Create Mod, and you go into your mod subfolder, and you're all set. Where, how do you find that? You go into Documents, Paradox Interactive, Hearts of Iron 4, and Mod. They will be in there. I trust, trust me on that. They will be. Well, I hope this video uh, gives you a quick rundown of the country stats and the setup itself. These will be found in like histories and countries, and that's where the text document will be. Now, the, about the characters, tune in next time, and I will do my best to discuss them. But for now, have a good day.